Good morning. So I'm, I want to talk a little bit about the Corinthians reading today. And Paul's letters have always been some of my favorites in the Bible. Whenever I gift somebody a Bible, I say, check out Romans. It's a really good one for how to live in the, in the life that we have, which is, in Paul's experience, a lot of suffering this is a theme throughout his writings to, you know, say, hang in there, fight the good fight and, and run the race and do the thing and, and, and it will get better and the glory will come. But there's, there's also some things that people who are way smarter than me about the Bible have, have said that point to Paul understanding that it isn't always what's still coming and what is way out there beyond our reach, but that there is resurrection right here and right now among us. There's a, a song that uh, was, was popular several years ago on one of the Christian radio stations by the band Building 429, and, it, and the chorus goes, um, all I know is I'm not home yet. This is not where I belong. Take this world and give me Jesus. This is not where I belong. And I always would listen to that song and think, yeah, this is, you know, this world, whatever, leave it. And, and I'm just looking for that thing. And then I started to, to understand that it's, it's not about waiting. It's about now. The kingdom of heaven is upon us now. There have been a lot of times in the last several years of the lives of the class of 2021 where they have had to really remember that Jesus is with them right now. If you haven't read the E! News for the week, I suggest that you do so that you can see the awesome picture of all of these grown up people when they were in seventh grade <laughs> having ice cream. Remember that? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I put that picture in there for you. So in, in 2015, a really big group of kids graduated, or like 16 of them. And that doesn't happen super often, that we have a really, really big class of kids. And so that group graduated and, you know, I lamented a little bit like, oh, what are we going to do? And then that very next fall, 11 more came in seventh grade. Um, we gained a few along the way, and, and now we're, we're sending off 13 kids into the world. Um, and they've, they've weathered a lot of storms. Just, just in the life of the church, there was that time where we signed up for a Haiti mission trip, and then there were those riots in Haiti. We couldn't go. And then there was that time we signed up for a Mexico mission trip, and then there was this thing called the pandemic, and we couldn't go. Not to mention all the other things that are just challenges when you're a teenager and, and trying to get through life. Last night, um, many of us got to gather here and bear witness to 11 people, eight of them teenagers, who were saying, I will, with God's help, to be confirmed. And that Holy Spirit being called down is just one more reminder of the way that that Holy Spirit is with us all the time. And I know I've had to lean on that an awful lot, especially in these last, how old is my kid? Um, 15 months. So I've invited a few, two of our graduates um, here this morning and I have a we're going to do a little sort of like talk show question and answer it's going to be fun um I'll let them introduce themselves in a second but 
you should know that these ladies grew up here at this church, have been on all six mission trips. That's the most you can do. They're about to do their sixth mission trip. And they were both confirmed last night. I feel like it's like this trifecta of awesomeness that's like coming to fruition here for these girls. So, um, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you guys can grab your microphones and you can take your masks off. I feel like I'm going to break everybody. This is grab that thing out of there. So tell us who you are and a little bit about like kind of how long you've, you've been at Grace, what's that, what's that, and then um, just briefly, what are your plans for next year? I will go first. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Olivia Anderson, and I have gone to Grace since before I can remember because my mom uh, introduced me to the church when I was very young. Um, just about right when I was born, and I've been here ever since. And uh, yeah, there you go. What are your plans for next year? Oh, my plans for next year. I am planning to go to community college in Southern California to Orange Coast College in Costa Mesa. Um, hi, I'm Michaela Cowan, and um, I've been at Grace since we moved here. So when I was in second grade, so ten almost 11 years um, and next year I'm planning on going to Ringling College of Art and Design to study uh, film so I'm going to be a film production major so that's kind of yeah. <laughs> that's my plan <laughs> so as we've mentioned this little thing called a pandemic has been happening and both of you we're all the way through your senior year dealing with that, plus a little bit of junior year. So obviously we know everything has been really, really impacted. But what I want to hear about is how did how what did that look like for you? Sort of paint us the picture of like what senior year was like for you. And then how did you how did you make it? How did you weather that storm? Uh, so for me, I I struggled a lot through my senior year. It was really difficult. Um, I was at home for the first half of the school year and then in person for the second half. And uh, it was really hard to be motivated and get my work done. It was hard when there was no social. Um, even when we went back to school, it was still difficult just because we had already gotten in this flow of senioritis and we we're so close to getting being done with the school year. It was just like, oh my gosh, like done, like I can't do anymore. Um, uh, so it was really difficult and it was really hard to, to get through that. Um, but I definitely, I definitely think I got through it with my close friend groups and people that I quarantined with and had a little bit of that social balance that kept me interested in just being in community and, uh, youth group and just all kinds of the little things that are tried to make it as, as normal as possible when everything else was not normal in the slightest so yeah yeah i definitely feel that a lot um our school was a little bit um flip floppy like we kind of went from like we're virtual we're in person we're virtual we're in person we're both at the same time like who knows what's going on here um and i think there was a lot of that during covid um and it, there still is i mean we're still in person and online and um, so that was what the situation looked like. Um, and I will admit that it was hard to get up in the mornings. There were a few mornings where I was like, yeah, I'm virtual today. Why not? Because everybody else is in person, so why not? Um, so I think definitely it was hard to wake up every morning, but um, I decided to also on Sunday mornings wake up for some reason um, and go to youth group. And that was kind of like my reason to get up in the mornings. I was like, okay, I'm like, the school year sucks, but I have youth group and I get to wake up and do that for an hour and that's gonna be great. And I'm excited to see everybody um, and actually talk to people because as I'm sure many of you guys know on Zoom, nobody turns their camera on. And so <laughs> nobody is interacting or talking. So yeah, 
Anyway, I've gone on for way too long, but that's kind of what this school year has been. So I yeah. feel like I need to point out Michaela lives in Rockland, which is two hours from here. So she would drive over when we would have in person youth group. We were sort of flip flopping too, and uh, she would make the drive. So you both have been here a really long time. You've gone through atrium, and obviously we have lots of youth group memories, but thinking about your whole Grace experience, will you share, share with us one of your favorite Grace memories? I actually have one off the top of my head. Um, I've told this story in church before, actually, but I love it so much that I'm going to tell it again. So um, how many years ago was our Guatemala mission trip? That was what, 2017. 2017. So on our 2017 mission trip to Guatemala, um, I was in a work group with about seven or eight other people, something like that. And we were uh, working on building a home for this family's son and his wife who were about to have a child. And there was a little boy on the work site. I think it was their grandson. Um, and he didn't speak English and was really shy at the beginning of the trip and wouldn't really interact with any of us, kind of hide away in the corner, but like silently watch us from the from behind like trees and the buildings and things like that. But um, a couple days in, he started to draw and he would feel more comfortable being out in the open and he would take sticks and draw in the dirt or he'd be drawing in his notebook or on paper or whatever it was. And um, I, at, during one of my breaks, I went over and I sat down with him and I started drawing with him. And uh, the last couple days, we kind of made this connection where he was like, oh, okay, I, I feel comfortable here. She understands like the artistic side of me. And even though we couldn't speak the same language, we had no way of interacting through actually talking. Um, we just interacted through art and through our drawing. And so um, at the end of the week, I gave him a notebook with a little picture that I had drawn of him, his younger sister, and myself with our names above it. And uh, he got on his knees on the ground and he drew the same picture of us and wrote my name on top of my little person that he had drawn and then his sister and himself as well. And then he gave me probably the best hug that I've ever had in my life. And it almost brought me to tears. It was really sweet. So. That has to be probably my favorite memory that has still stuck with me to this day. So, yeah, I I also have a great memory from Guatemala. It was a great trip. It was a really great trip. Um, I have a lot of great memories from the mission trips and from inside the church, which I haven't seen in like a while. Um, and so I think that it's really hard to choose one specific moment. Um, and I am stalling because still nothing is coming to my head. Um, I think I'll also do something from Guatemala. I'm going to copy you. Um, we, there was one night when we were with the mission, we were with the youth group, and we were all in this worship uh, service that we went to every night. Um, and we did this whole uh, like service about like how God has always been there and how He's never left us alone and how. Um, we've always been with him and, um, this was the summer that we moved. And so this is when we moved from St. Helena to Rockland. Um, and it wasn't an easy move. <laughs> um, oh, um, promised myself I wouldn't do this. Um, <laughs> and I promised her she would. <laughs> Um, it wasn't an easy move, but it took a while to find a lot of friends and find a community. Um, and I found that here and with the youth group and with our friends. Oh my gosh, sorry, yikes. Um, so we found that and that was a really special night with that specific sermon because it was all about how like maybe I have felt alone but God has never been there or God has always been there yikes <laughs> <laughs>
it's like turns out i'm not here i oh yikes um anyway god has always been there um and i think that that was kind of it turned in from like i loved the church before obviously but atrium was like cool i get to draw for an hour and <laughs> in the best way possible church was really boring for a second grader <laughs> so um uh, but up till that point, it kind of felt like an obligation to go. But I think that after that um, particular night, I remember I just like broke down crying and um, kind of like this. And uh, it just was a really great moment. And I came back from that and decided that I wanted to take my next steps and um, be with the youth group and be with the church and um, why I got confirmed last night started that journey um in 2017 apparently so yeah that was my favorite <laughs> that's my favorite memory i guess and then the next morning we were all uh, awoken with god's beautiful grace and an earthquake that sent oh, her running yeah, to the door I, about that. <laughs> I like oh. they yeah they always remember like hey, i had this amazing moment also a lot of them like got really sick on that trip there was some like oh, yeah. terrible stomach thing going around yeah. I'm looking at you. Yeah, I am. Um, good times. There's this never a dull moment. Uh, so I wonder how you think your life would be different right now if you hadn't been part of this church. That's a really tough question to answer. Um, to be honest, it would have been very difficult for that not to be the case. It was kind of inevitable that I grow up here since my mom worked here and I basically lived in the church for about four years of my life. Um, <laughs> outside of school, inside of school, during church, after church, every day. Um, she would have her little coloring book. Oh, yeah. Like, I had my whole desk and everything. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, that's a really difficult question for me to answer because this really is my community, um, which actually was demonstrated to me really wonderfully last night when uh, a lot of my community showed up for me at my confirmation. And um, it reminded me that they're my family. And I, I'm i not really sure what uh, my life would be like without them uh, because a lot of them are some of my number one fans. So I would probably... Um, not be as fulfilled as I am now. Uh, I probably would not be as well-rounded of a human because I wouldn't have had their influence. Um, I probably wouldn't be as musically inclined because I wouldn't have had Craig Bond's influence. Um, I would probably just feel at a lot more of a loss because I wouldn't have the uh, spiritual background that I've gained at this church and the family that has supported me through that. So yeah uh if i had to say it in one word i think it would be dark um like i said when we moved away this was kind of like my lifeline this was my uh thing that held me to stay alive to to say the least um there was a long time that i wasn't okay um but like i said I came back almost every week. I drove the two hours. Actually, my parents drove the two hours because I couldn't drive quite yet. So that was nice of them. I appreciate them. Um, but I honestly don't think that I would be here if it wasn't for the church. Um, oh gosh, I promised myself. It was, yeah. I don't think I would have been here. Well, Sorry, that got dark. That <laughs> but you're yes. here. Yeah. So grateful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to take us back around to Corinthians. I uh, I've given enough sermons that I feel obligated to like get to the readings. Um, so I've I've invited Michaela and Olivia each to to answer one last question that has to do with what Paul is writing. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. So Olivia, 
I think you're the one that's going to answer this question. Tell us about a time at Grace where you felt renewed. Well, it's very personal and very uh, recent. I feel renewed from last night, actually, very lucky to say. Um, also, my baptism when I was 11. Uh, fortunately, I have my water bearer sitting right over here, Anthony Kreider. Thank you very much. Um, yes, he did participate in my baptism very kindly. Uh, and I, um, I'm very grateful that I've been able to have both of those experiences here in this church uh, to be baptized and confirmate and confirmed because both of them were my choice and I really got to decide when um, I felt that time was right to be renewed and both times it has been just as fantastic and uh, the outcomes have been just as fantastic and I'm still here still in the church and um, I'm really glad that I've had both of those opportunities to uh, really be with my family and my community in choosing to reconnect with my faith and make that a priority for me. Yeah, the sacraments are really a powerful thing. We had the privilege of um, having I, our, our little guy Noah baptized last week along with Isaiah. And I looked at him later that day and I was like, you look different. Like there is a thing that happens, you know, that outward invisible sign is just a little bit of what happens in our hearts um, in those times. And yeah, pretty cool that you got to do both of those things. So Paul goes on to write, for this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. So again, I can't stress enough the affliction <laughs> that is upon us in this world. So many challenges, even you know, well beyond the pandemic and you know, trying to graduate. Um, but Michaela, yes. I wonder if you would tell us about a challenge in your life that you feel that God has helped you to overcome. We've talked a lot about the other things. I'm gonna move past that so I don't cry anymore and probably talk about something else. Um, I think, I think COVID has been a big one. COVID has definitely been a big one for everybody. And that was one of the times when it was like, yeah, sure, I'm alone, but everybody's alone, so it's cool. Um, but after a while, I am I have like severe social anxiety, which is a miracle that I'm up here in front of you guys today. But um, I know, right? She's so good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I have severe social anxiety. So at first, I was like, yes, no people, no crowds. I love it. Yes, I get to be away from the bad people at my school. It's awesome. Um, and then after a while, it didn't, it wasn't so cool. I was like, okay, I'm ready to be done with this. Can I please be done with this? That would, I learned my lesson. And uh, it wasn't done 15 months later. Here we are. Um, and I think that um, for a while, I was kind of angry. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of angry at God because I was like, why? <laughs> Like a lot of people have lost a lot this year. Um, why, why did this happen? Um, and I didn't understand it. Um, but then um, something changed. We started going back in person. And um, even though we had dividers that we could only see through a small window like this, and all the teachers were still on the computers and everything, um, that was rough. But it started feeling a little bit more normal. Um, and it kind of made me think that as bad as this year has been, there's a little bit of hope. Um, and I've definitely seen God kind of respond to my answers. Respond to my answers? What? My English, I swear. Respond to my questions. Um, and obviously, he hasn't come down and be like, hey, this is the answer to all your problems. I you wish need to could, do this. could I get that? If you ever find out how that happens, <laughs> let me I'll know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. That's... Been, I think it's been a few thousand years since he's done that. So, oh, okay. um, just a few, just a, just a few. Um, no, but I think that that hasn't happened, obviously. But there have been little things throughout the day where I'm like, "Hey, I need you right now," and then I did. Um, like this morning, where I was like, "Hey, I can't speak in front of people," and he was like, "Yes, you can. You got this." Uh, so then here we are. Um, 
so yeah, I think it's just been more of like little challenges where God has helped me overcome, uh, especially the last 15 months. But again, it's been kind of a struggle for the last few years. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's, I say the last few years, it's been like five years since mm -hmm. I moved. So I maybe a little bit more than five years or a few years. Gosh, I'm gonna let the microphone go before I keep messing <laughs> up my English because that's embarrassing. <clears throat> well, I have the best job in the whole world to get to shepherd teenagers um, on their journey um, in their relationship with God. And I don't, I don't have any special powers. Um, I just get to accompany the work that's already being done by that Holy Spirit thing. And I'm so grateful for each of you sharing this morning. Thank you, Olivia and Michaela, for your wisdom. I'm continually inspired by our teenagers. And I always, I always try to balance this. I always say, like, oh, I have all this hope because, you know, these adolescents growing up, you know, just have have so much to offer the world and there's so much good. But we have to be super careful as adults that we don't just say, well, good, go fix all the problems, future generations, because that's on us. It's on us to come alongside. It's on us to lead. It's on us to listen and support and guide and ask and check in and show up. So thanks for showing up today as we send 13 of these kids to the next step in their journey. Uh, we'll get to do that in a few minutes and have some more blessings and acknowledgements. But um, I pray that we can all feel the kingdom of heaven right now. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much, Michaela, Olivia, Erica. That was some really deep sharing. And I know um, I feel, well, I discovered that a mask makes a very good eye wipe as well. <laughs> I'm so grateful to you all for your sharing. And I have to say, I'm grateful for the support of this church for over, I think almost two decades now of believing in like a youth group is really important. And even before the kids started showing up and you know, numbers like 10 and 13 and 16 and seven, um, believing in this program and supporting it. And I'm so grateful to Erica for giving, um, giving what she does, which is, she says she's not magic, but I kind of think she is. I do, especially now that I have a teenager. I'm like, you're magic. <laughs> so grateful to all of you guys. It's been a privilege for me, the, the parts of our journeys that we've gotten to go on, like that Guatemala trip. That was really great. I'm looking forward to the next one too. So now uh, we have Ken coming up here to lead us in some prayers, and then we're going to have some more prayers. It's prayer time. <laughs> 